Hi, welcome to The Brian Murray Show, a real estate show, New Jersey style. This is episode seven, and this is our election special. By the time you're watching this, the elections have already passed. Uh, someone has won, someone has lost, uh, but there is no more contentiousness uh, about it. So we're gonna talk about elections and what it means to the local community. First of all, um, elections have a very big impact on your local community. Specifically, as they say in real estate, uh, everything is location, location, and location. Same thing with elections. It's all local, local, and local. Everybody likes to talk about the national elections, um, the presidential election, senators, governors, uh, but really the most impact to your daily life is the mayor and the city council and those other people that really control the day-to-day um, functionings that, in which you live. Uh, they really control the community and the, the community base. So hopefully the election cycle in the community that you lived in wasn't contentious. Um, it seems that the smaller that the, the, the community, the more backbiting and contentiousness uh, exists, especially uh, for the candidates. And a lot of times people don't want to run simply because they don't want to have to put up with uh, the blogs and the people uh, calling them names and even their neighbors looking at them with a, a slant eye. And it's not, it's not that people should be rewarded for or applauded for actually trying to get involved and um, trying to you know, do some good. It's quite the opposite. So you get who you get that has thick skin and that you know, can put up with it. And uh, you know, I commend everybody who does run. The local community uh, and how it impacts you with these local elections, specifically um, the people who win the elections, they often decide who's on the local planning board, the local zoning board. Uh, so if you're a real estate owner <clears throat> you know, and you want to put an extension on the back of your brownstone, well, it depends on who's on the local zoning board and planning board and you know, who's made a backroom deal. A lot of these local places like Hoboken and Jersey City, there are backroom deals that happen to make sure that somebody's friend gets on it. And the next thing you know, you can't build your deck or you can't build out the four extra feet you need to put on a third bedroom because um, of elections. So please do know that no you know, big, big zoning um, issues around parking, around curb cuts. Uh, where can you put the parking? Can you put it underneath? Well, you have to have double wide lots in a lot of places for that. So there are a lot of impacts that the election makes on your daily life here in Hoboken, Jersey City, Hudson County, and everywhere else, uh, Main Street, USA. Uh, and that's the discussion point uh, for today. Today's hot topic, how do elections affect the housing market? To begin, it depends if you're looking on a macro level or on a local level. Um, we've seen in the past that uh, a lot of times that pre-election on, a, on a, uh, a national level, you're not seeing a whole lot of movement in terms of interest rates. Everybody's kind of holding their collective breath to see what is the direction of the federal government, really who's going to be controlling what and you know, maybe what way um, uh, some of the the tax laws are going to go and that kind of thing. So on a national, um, on a national basis, pre-election, it tends to be kind of a standstill. And then post-election, it's really going to depend on who, uh, you know, who wins and what direction we go in. However, um, and also on a local level, um, you don't really see as much impact post-election on the housing market. As I did speak with in the discussion points, you'll see some, uh, some real significance with the planning board and the zoning board and how that's going to impact an individual owner, but not generally, say, a town, um, where you will see some of the uh, impacts of an election on the market in general is, hey, there are some mayors, city councils that like to tax a lot. They like to spend a lot. And that comes right as a direct increase in your property taxes. So an increase in your property taxes is going to affect the housing market because um, buyers are looking for their overall cost of ownership, which includes their mortgage payment, their interest payment, their insurance, and also their taxes. So if their taxes go up, 
what they can afford for their overall mortgage tends to go down and then it therefore uh, puts some downward pressure on prices. So that's um, a real impact on the market itself. The other impact that we're seeing in the market is on the tax code or on the national side in terms of the state and local taxes uh, as in what was um, used to be an unlimited deduction that kind of got capped as well as a, uh, a mortgage deduction. So elections will have consequences, positive and negative, but specifically when it comes to eliminating the state and local tax deduction and capping the mortgage, the mortgage deduction, you're going to start to see um, in some of the, the New York metro markets that the prices, there'll be some uh, downward pressure on the prices uh, because of that. This is today's discussion point. This is the Ask the Expert segment. I'm here with Hemish Kapadia, CPA. And today's question is going to be regarding um, the tax changes regarding uh, state and local taxes and how it affects, uh, it really affects someone's um, returns. No, Brian, nice seeing you. Um, in terms of the changes that have occurred over the last year, I'm sure a lot of people have seen its effects. Um, with the change for 18 taxes. The state and local tax deduction is now limited to $10,000 combined. That includes property taxes, your local tax, and your state tax deduction off your W-2s, as well as any state taxes you've paid throughout the year. Um, and this is a heavy change to digest because for a lot of people, that was a lot of savings that was built into it in terms of tax credit based on their rate and how their overall income performed. Um, you know how people are trying to work with this. Unfortunately, there's not much wiggle room with this or ability to shift it. Um, you see people looking at changing housing, um, where the property taxes are a little bit lower, a higher level of mortgage interest. And the reason why I say a higher level of mortgage interest is because even though the limits on the mortgage interest deduction have changed, it's now on the first 750,000 of loan uh, where you can still deduct the interest component. So you see people either downsizing a little bit, buying into areas with a change of property tax, going and refinancing with a higher mortgage rate um, for that interest component to help them still itemize because a lot of people are unable to itemize going forward. Okay. okay. That's the Ask the Expert segment. The good, the bad, the ugly election special. The good. City Hall. You know, that's a place where you think about elections. That's where the city clerk usually is. Um, in a lot of these towns, like Hoboken, New Jersey City, um, City Hall is one place uh, that's fairly convenient unless you have to park, but close to local transportation, kind of some place that uh, you have to pass. And all of the uh, city agencies tend to be in the same building, so you can kind of bounce from one to the other um, relatively quickly to get what you need, because usually when you go to one, they point you to go to another and then back again. So that uh, tends to be the good about City Hall. Uh, the bad is that, uh, I don't know if you've been to City Hall lately, uh, but a lot of the City Halls now have uh, metal detectors that you need to pass through in order to get into the City Hall itself. Like if you're going to the planning department or the building department or pay your taxes, to have to go through a metal detector like at the airport and there's a cop standing there, um, it just seems a little bit like overkill. So for you know 200 years, there didn't need to be a, uh, a way to go through a metal detector just to go pay your taxes. And now I guess there is, and it's added cost. It's added inconvenience. Um, and I, you know I, I'm wondering, maybe we need to save those metal detectors for going to the Hoboken Parking Authority or the Jersey City Parking Authority instead of going to the pay your taxes or, or the cultural affairs department. Uh, and then the ugly. So again, a lot of these are cool buildings that have been built 100 plus years ago. Uh, and if you ever try to get from one floor to the other in the elevators, it takes forever. I mean, you can literally get to the top of the Freedom Tower in about as much time as it takes to go up two stories in one of these uh, uh, these city halls. 
you wait. Some of them have the chain door, like the, the, the gate that's got to go across, and you push the button, and then that takes, oh, I don't know, 20 seconds for the door to slowly start to close. And then each floor, it, it's almost like you've got like uh, little gerbils. There are hundreds of them like just pushing you up and up and up and then they get tired and then a little bit more a little more and again you could probably get to the top of the freedom tower in about the same amount of time so this is the good the bad and the ugly today's inspiration every election is determined by the people who show up uh, this has been the brian murray show thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed it please follow me on uh, Instagram, YouTube, um, or Facebook. Uh, I do appreciate comments. Uh, and if there is anything here that you disagreed with, uh, please reach out and let me know, and I'll tell you why you're wrong.